we're kicking off the third year of the decade of the arts, the lighting of our new iconic Orlando sculpture outside the Orlando Citrus Bowl. And what's uh, great about this, we were able to preserve the iconic Orlando sign that the Orlando Visitors and Convention Visitors Bureau had put up. We preserved those and came up with a reuse, which is this beautiful sculpture behind us. What we're creating is a light bridge that begins here and ends at Lake Tupiola. So on the way down Church Street, we now have street signs. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our mayor, Buddy Dyer. Good afternoon and welcome to the April 6, 2015 meeting of the Orlando City Council. We're going to begin today's proceedings with the invocation offered by Reverend Josh Bell of the Spring of Life United Methodist Church, which is located on Moss Park Road in Lake Nona, which would be District 1 Commissioner. Reverend Bell became the pastor in July of 2014. Spring of Life is a multi-generational, multicultural church committed to reaching its community through love and service. Pastor Bell is a native Floridian who graduated from the University of Florida. <laughs> before receiving his Master's of Divinity from Asbury Cemetery here in Orlando. Seminary. Seminary. What did I say? Cemetery? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well. One out of two is not bad. Yeah. Okay. I got in trouble because I've been forcing people to stand during the invocation. So some group called me out on that. So I'm going to tell you that you can stand or you rem can remain seated whichever you choose during the invocation. And uh, I am, however, going to stand, and anybody else that wants to can do that as well. And then after the invocation, we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by District 1 Commissioner Jim Gray. If you would join me in prayer. God of all people, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you have gifted us with. We give you thanks for this opportunity, for this gathering to come about of leaders, those who are elected, and those who represent others who are not in this room. Lord, we ask that you would give wisdom as decisions are made, as discussions are had, as policies are set. We pray that in all things, all people would be kept in mind, the people of this city, this city beautiful, we pray that the decisions made here would reflect well on them and that we would all come together to make the best decisions possible. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you, Reverend Bell. All right, Madam Clerk, would, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Could you call the roll and make a determination of a quorum, please? Commissioner Gray? Here. Commissioner Ortiz? Here. Commissioner Stewart? Here. Commissioner Sheehan? Here. Commissioner Hill? Present. Commissioner Ings? Here. Mayor Dyer? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. First item of business is consideration of the minutes from the agenda review and city council meetings so uh, March 23rd. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed and so the motion carries. Well, we have a great uh, honor today. I'd like to acknowledge that Congressman Dan Webster is attending our meeting today to present a special United States flag, which will be auctioned off by the Victim Service Center on August the 29th at the Manello, and he'll be presenting that to Louis Damiani, who is the Executive Director of the Victim Service Center. So welcome, Congressman Webster. The, the 
uh, audience here found out you were coming. We re generally don't have as many people that come to <laughs> our city council <laughs> meetings, but I'm glad you're such an attraction that you filled up the entire chamber. That is fantastic. Marcia, would you uh, come to the podium and introduce the first item for us? Thank you, Mayor Dyer. Yes, I will. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, City Team, citizens, and other special guests. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and each year, the Mayor and City Council help to raise awareness and educate our citizens about how to prevent and address sexual violence. This is something that is important and that matters in our city, and each year, our City Council and Mayor take time to acknowledge that. Our partner in this effort is the Victim Service Center of Central Florida. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce the center's executive director, Louis Damiani, who will give a brief overview before the mayor reads the proclamation. Louis. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, it's my distinct pleasure to um, be here with you today to kick off uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. You know, um, with me today, I want to really quickly recognize our board chair, uh, Craig Swigert. Uh, Bridget. Also, Bridget Keefe, who is um, the executive director of the Downtown Orlando Partnership. She's with us today. And Alan Johnson, I believe, is also here. He's uh, one of your city's finest, and we genuinely appreciate you affording him the time to serve on our board and do the great work that he does for us. Um, the mission of the Victim Service Center is to, to provide uh, services and resources to victims of sexual assault, traumatic circumstances, and violent crimes. And we do that a whole lot of ways. Um, we are the Certified Rape Crisis Center for Orange and Osceola Counties, and we provide uh, confidential emergency 24-7 counseling. Um, we provide forensic exams to collect DNA evidence. We provide, provide long-term therapy and um, crisis counseling as well. Each year, as you heard, in the month of April, it's designated as Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and we do a whole variety of activities across the month um, to try to draw awareness to that. And thanks to our partnership with the city, uh, today is our official kickoff and tonight the universal color of sexual assault awareness month is the color teal and I'm proud to say that uh, thanks to you all that the Lake Eola fountain will be lit tonight in teal the spire at the Amway Center will be lit in teal your tower of light out front will be lit in teal the fountain out front will be lit in teal and even your next door neighbor over at the Aloft they're gonna light their whole building in teal tonight so downtown is gonna be a wave of teal and hopefully um, people will start asking the question uh, what is that teal color? And I gave each of you a ribbon, um, so I hope that you'll wear it throughout uh, the course of the month and stand with us in unity um, to draw awareness to sexual assault and try to end it in our community. Um, I I'm excited also to tell you that um, while today is the kickoff, on the 29th of the month is sort of how we wind down Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and each year we do something that's called Denim Day. And um, I found out earlier today that the city, for the second year in a row, is going to join us as a partner, and we appreciate that, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, they're joining along with Rollins College as well as uh, Valencia, who have also signed as partners, and now we're going to get everybody else to join us as well. Um, and it, for those of you that are asking, what is Denim Day? It is a na nationwide uh, uh, awareness campaign. It was originally triggered by a ruling in the Italian Supreme Court where a rape victim was um, uh, conviction was actually overturned when the justices felt that the victim was wearing tight jeans and so she must have help, helped her rapist move, remove the jeans and thereby implying consent. The following day, the women of the Italian parliament, they came together, they wore their jeans in solidarity with this victim, and since then, wearing jeans on Denim Day has become an awareness symbol against erroneous and destructive attitudes uh, about sexual assault. And so we thank you for joining on board and joining us and encourage your other colleagues and businesses to also wear uh, Denim on the 29th. I know it's the State of the City address and uh, it's gonna be a big day here in Orlando and hopefully it'll be a wave of denim on that I day. I so love to wear jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you have my permission. Uh, but thank you, Mayor. And then finally, uh, finally, finally, uh, we do a bunch of stuff throughout the month, as I mentioned, but on the 17th of this month, we will do our second annual gala. And we do that at the city's very own Manila Museum. And last year, we had about 300 in attendance. I know Commissioner Sheehan was there, and we appreciate um, uh, you being there. And it is a very, very special night with entertainment. And actually, the city's Dubs Dread Catering, they donate all the food for the event. It is a great fun. It's after work on a Friday night. And we certainly, uh, I passed out invitations to all of you and I hope that uh, some of you will be able to attend again I heard uh, Mayor Dyer that you're planning to be there and we appreciate you um, committing to to joining us on that and 
the, the, the one of the features of the event, one of the funnest parts of the event is a very, very special silent auction. And this year, it's extra special. And the reason why it's extra special, well, I'm going to let Congressman Webster explain why. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mayor and uh, Commissioners, for what you do for the city of Orlando and uh, for, for, for the great city it is. It's an awesome thing, and uh, uh, I enjoy uh, the, the new buildings. It's just awesome. It's amazing what you've done. But uh, I know also you support, and uh, thank you for supporting these volunteer organizations, inclu including the uh, Victim Service Center, which is uh, something that I've toured, and I believe they do a fantastic work here uh, in... Uh, and there is just, this is a heinous crime, uh, especially trafficking and other things that are done. It, it's, it's awful. It's a scourge, not in just our area or in the country, but around the world. And so anyway, in honor of that, I, we flew, in honor of uh, the Victim Service Center, we flew a flag over the United States Capitol. And uh, we're giving it to them. This is it. It's, it's certainly, uh, it's boxed up nicely, but it can be used outside too. It, it's weather worthy. And I hope someone will come and bid a lot of money for it. Uh, we've had pretty good success at most of the 501c3s that we've supported in their silent auction of getting uh, lots of money from, from a little flag, which is uh, important. And so anyway, Louis, it's good to present this to you. It's an honor. Thank you for your work in the community, and thank you all for letting me come. Thank you. Thank you. So a great honor and a privilege, um, and I am remiss if I don't introduce my staff. We have several members of the Victim Service Center that are here. If you guys could uh, stand up and be recognized, please. We have all master's level counselors, social workers, crisis intervention folks that are on call 24-7, and they are an amazing group of individuals, and I'm honored uh, to be part of that team. Louis, so I have a proclamation that I'll read and then I'll come down and we'll do some pictures. Whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month is intended to draw attention to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and impacts every resident of the city of Orlando, and whereas rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment impact our community because statistics indicate that one in five women and one in 71 men will be raped in their lifetimes, and whereas with leadership, dedication, and encouragement, there is evidence that we can successfully prevent sexual violence in the city of Orlando through increased education, awareness, and community involvement. And whereas the city of Orlando strongly supports the efforts of the Victim Service Center, law enforcement, and local partners and citizens to actively engage in efforts to prevent sexual violence and help survivors connect with services. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, mayor of the city of Orlando, hereby do proclaim the month of April 2015 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the city of Orlando. Okay, I'm going to take one item a little bit out of order. Uh, yesterday was Frank Billingsley's birthday, and he is standing in the back of the room, a little bit embarrassed now. I suppose that he turned a little bit red back there. So, as is tradition, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Frank. Happy birthday. Frank and I share the same birth year. <laughs> <laughs>
but I have not had my birthday this year. That is exactly right. So Cindy Brown uh, was with Congressman Webster, and she's his uh, chief of staff here in the district. And Celeste Brown, who is the regional director for Senator Nelson, has also joined us today. Celeste, thank you for being here. And Nick Corvino, who is the Central Florida Regional Manager for CFO Jeff Atwater, is here as well. Where are you, Nick? Ah, there you go. Okay, thank you all for being here. All right, our second presentation, I'm going to call on Orrin, how about you take a turn up here for National Community Development Week. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, today we celebrate the start of National Community Development Week. Uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development would like to recognize one of our significant partners working to address homelessness, the Men's Service Center. The City of Orlando, along with Orange County and the Coalition for the Homeless of Central Florida, entered into a tri-party agreement to design, plan, and construct the Men's Service Center on Central Boulevard in Orlando. The Men's Service Center was a CDBG project with the City of Orlando contributing $1.6 million, Orange County contributing nearly 5.1 million in CDBG funds, and in addition to considerable additional support from our community. Uh, here today to tell us about the Men's Service Center is Mr. Brent Trotter, President and CEO of the Coalition. Okay, well good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, I've forgotten my remarks, so I'm just as anxious to hear what I have to say as some of you are, perhaps. <laughs> um, but uh, it is uh, our privilege to be a partner with the City of Orlando to address the issues that are facing us with regard to homelessness. Uh, it is also good to see one of our partners uh, on the Diaz today with uh, Commissioner Stewart and his service at Christian Service Center, a partner that we also uh, cherish and value very much in our relationship. Uh, for a number of years, the Coalition for the Homeless uh, realized that one of the things that was uh, woefully inadequate in our service provision for homeless men was services that were meaningful and life-changing. Uh, we operated what was known as the Pavilion, and the Pavilion was an emergency shelter uh, drop-in center where men would come to us homeless and then would leave us homeless uh, after a night of shelter. And our board of directors along with our staff began, began to realize that we certainly needed to do more than just uh, provide a meal. That indeed addressing homelessness is more than a meal. And we wanted to make sure that those who wanted it were able to access the meaningful services that would allow them to transform their lives. And so with the partnership with the city of Orlando and certainly uh, with Mayor Dyer's leadership and being able to uh, do something differently for our community. We were able to build what is known now as the Men's Service Center. And the Men's Service Center, uh, I think, um, I, I need a 14-year-old up here. I don't know how to run this technology. I, uh, is open. I see it here, but I don't see it up there. Is open and we're providing meaningful services to, to 250 men every night. Uh, these men are receiving what uh, would be referred to as wraparound services. They're receiving case management. We have a program designated, 50 beds designated for men who are uh, struggling with the demons of alcohol and substance abuse addiction. We also have 50 beds that are designated for our veterans, those who have served, and because of uh, their own uh, inability to uh, access services or because of, of uh, the failure of the system. They have begun to self-medicate, and of course, they have uh, devolved all the way down into homelessness, and so we're addressing that as well. We're also seeking to address the many men who are economically challenged because of that uh, time in life where they lost a job, they lost everything, and they have nowhere else to turn. We have operational uh, opportunities for men to attend uh, educational uh, classes that is a part of the Orange County Public School System so that they can get a VOTEC uh, certification that will put them in the marketplace for a uh, living wage kind of, of job. So we're very pleased to be able to report to you that already in the, the few months that we've been open, we actually had a soft opening in June. 
of 2014, we have already placed 125 men in housing as a result of that. And then currently we have 250 men in the program and we have a waiting list of over 200 waiting to get into the building. So it significantly speaks to what we're doing in addressing the issue of homelessness. And so the bottom line for that is to say that our community now has 125 men who prior to the Men's Service Center were homeless and that in our view of how these guys are seeking the services, over 375 men are now off the streets of Orlando and the City Beautiful and our larger community because of the Men's Service Center. And we could not do it, sir, without your leadership. Thank you for that. Thank you, commissioners, for your leadership and for your support in what we're doing. It's a pleasure to be a part of this community and to have the leadership in place that's addressing such a critical issue that's not only serious to this community but across this nation. I have a proclamation, City of Orlando, whereas the week of April 6th through the 11th, 2015, has been reserved as National Community Development Week to celebrate the Community Development Block Grant Program and the Home Investment Partnerships Program, and whereas the CDBG and Home Programs provide annual funding to local governments to provide decent, safe, and affordable housing and economic opportunities to low and moderate income persons, and whereas the CDBG and home programs have been administered by the City of Orlando and have positively impacted the city and its citizens through leveraging federal dollars, thereby providing needed infrastructure improvements, neighborhood center construction, improvements to park and rec facilities, elimination of slum and blight, and preservation of its housing stock. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim the week of April 6th through the 11th, 2015, as National Community Development Week in the City of Orlando. Okay, here is the one that most of you are here for. Uh, Marcia, would you come up and introduce Volunteer Appreciation Month? Yes, Mayor, thank you very much. Mayor Dyer and City Commissioners and uh, everyone here today, we are so very fortunate in the City of Orlando to have so many people that give back in various ways. As all of you know, because all of our commissioners are involved as volunteers and with mm -hmm. volunteers, our city is better because of volunteerism. And uh, Mayor Dyer just hosted his annual volunteer appreciation reception. Thank you to the commissioners that could join us for that. And we feel that volunteers and national service members are the lifeblood of our community because of their dedication, their commitment, their patriotism, their kindness, and their hard work. So whether you serve in a city department or in our community, we are very, very pleased and fortunate to have you. We're grateful for our valued volunteers and our valued National Service members. Each of you, whether a citizen, employee volunteer, or National Service member, helps to make our city a better place and contributes to the quality of life in our city. So it is my pleasure at this time to ask Mayor Dyer to come up and read the proclamation, and then we want all of our volunteers and National Service members to come forward. City of Orlando Proclamation. Whereas President Barack Obama has designated the month of April, well, this one's a little tinier, <laughs> to recognize the hard work, dedication, and passion of volunteers and national service members throughout our nation. And whereas last year more than 65 million Americans gave their time and service to our nation, which is a testament to the compassion, generosity, and of the American spirit. And whereas the City of Orlando commemorates National Volunteer Appreciation Month 
by recognizing its valued volunteers and national service members at the annual Mayor's Volunteer Appreciation Reception and the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service. And whereas the City of Orlando is a proud member of the National Cities of Service Coalition that is implementing our Cities of Service initiative, Orlando Cares, to engage more residents and partners in impact volunteering that fosters youth literacy, youth crime prevention, and community safety. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Dyer, Mayor of the City of Orlando, hereby do proclaim the month of April 2015 as Volunteer Appreciation Month in the City of Orlando. To the right, you're perfect. 20 steps right. Good to see you, man. You doing all right? Good. I love it. I love it. I don't have your stuff anymore. I still have my info. How you doing? It's all good. This is, this is not a bad one. <laughs> Give them just a second. <laughs> Were you wishing that I had your piece before they all left for short <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> I didn't set the order. Well, it would be better, right? Okay, in uh, continuing this um, theme of recognizing volunteers, uh, Commissioner Ortiz would like to recognize and thank some volunteers in a program in his district. Thank you, Mayor and fellow commissioners. Today we're also celebrating the fifth anniversary of the opening of the Florida State Attorney General's uh, Seniors vs. Crime program in the city of Orlando, which also covers Orange County. This is a program that is very near and dear to my heart uh, because during my last years in law enforcement, I worked closely with the Office of the Attorney General to bring this project to the city of, or to the city of Orlando. Excuse me. In 1989, some of Florida's most effective crime fighters were unleashed through the creation of the Attorney General's Seniors vs. Crime Project. This effective unit has allowed seniors to become involved in not only their own protection, but also that of their fellow citizens. They are our Attorney General's eyes and ears. These volunteers actively assist in consumer protection investigations. Our office in District 2, City of Orlando, County of Orange, open on April 7, 2010. Today I would like to recognize two uh, out of the four special people who have been volunteering at this office. They have received over 400 cases since uh, its opening. Since day one, we had the great honor of having Mr. Tom Goulet as the office manager of this location. Mr. Goulet has been the guiding star at this office. I can say today, without a doubt, that without him, there wouldn't have been a senior versus crime office in the city of Orlando. Tom, you're a great friend to our community and to myself. 
You served the city in our fire department for 27 years and continue your career in Orange and Osceola counties for nine more years. You're a true public servant. I want to say thank you on behalf of our community and all the seniors that your office has been able to assist in the last five years. So, Tom, can you come up here? We also have, as part of the office, and she's been serving also with Mr. Tom Goulet, Ms. Marquita Anderson for five years. So can you please come up here? One more. In celebration of Volunteer Appreciation Month, I would like to also present a small token of appreciation to a very special volunteer and friend of our community in District 2, Mr. Sergio Padilla. Mr. Padilla is the creator and president of the Metro Orlando Hispanic Community Emergency Response Team, which covers Orange, Osceola, Volusia, and Hillsborough counties. He created this organization in two, 2009. In 2011, his organization was recognized by FEMA Citizen Corps. Since this program started in Central Florida, Mr. Padilla has assisted over 1,800 people in completing community emergency response training. He has also worked very closely with Mr. Manny Soto, our city manager of emergency management. Additionally, for the past five years and on a monthly basis, Sergio goes to the Orange County East Public Library and facilitates CPR classes and a course entitled, How to Be Prepared Before, During, and After Emergency, the First 72 Hours. This library is the only one in Orange County that has a table full of information in Spanish and English related to FEMA and on how to handle different emergencies. This is all thanks to Mr. Padilla's leadership. Mr. Padilla is also very passionate about this program and also about volunteering and servicing senior citizens in our district. Sergio. For this reason and many more, I would like to present this plaque to you for your unwavering commitment and dedication while serving the citizens of our community. Okay, we have one more presentation, and Commissioner Ings will introduce some guests for that presentation. Thank you, Mayor. Ings. Mayor and Council, the Medical Eye Bank of Florida was established in 1978 by the Tissue Banks International TBI with a vision to serve local donor families, surgeons, hospitals, and recipients 
with the comprehensive eye banking program. For 35 years, the Medical Eye Bank of Florida has brought a rich tradition of service to Central Florida, focusing directly on local tissue, tissue to local recipients. Last year, the gift of sight was transformed 1,614 Central Florida families. Over 48,000 Americans received the gift of sight through cornea donation and transplantation every year. Here with us today to present the Community Champion for Sight Award are Rebecca McCollum, Hospital and Community Relations Coordinator, and Kimberly Owens, Hospital and Community Relations Coordinator, both from Medical Eye Bank of Florida. I would also like to acknowledge Mr. Chris Bruno, who is the director of the Medical Eye Bank of Florida, but was unable to be with us here today. Thank you so much, um, Mayor Dyer and uh, Commissioner Ings and the rest of the council for allowing us to be here today. We're so excited to be able to present the Community Champion for Sight Award today to Commissioner Ings of District 6, um, who's become a great friend of our organization and who's been an incredible advocate for the gift of cornea donation and transplantation. Um, as he noted, um, our iBank was established in 1978. We reestablished ourselves here back in 2012 just to ensure that we could provide the best possible service for donor families, for surgeons, all of the hospitals that we work with, as well as for donor families who so generously give the gift of sight to others. Um, in 2013, we were very fortunate to have Mayor Dyer and the City Council um, proclaim March as National Eye Donor Month in these very chambers by reading a proclamation into the record, and we're so grateful for that as well. Um, shortly thereafter, we first became uh, formally acquainted with Commissioner Ings when he attended our agency's open house and our donor commemorative collage um, installment at our offices um, down on North Orange Avenue. Um, while there, he was able to interact with donor families who were present um, to honor their loved ones who had given the gift of sight through donation and transplantation. Um, it wasn't really until my colleague Rebecca McCollum um, attended the mayor's, uh, excuse me, the commissioner's annual golf tournament that we really became aware of what his personal connection was to donation and transplantation when we found out that his mother-in-law had actually been a two-time cornea transplant recipient. And so it became clear um, why they've become so dedicated, he and his wife, June to the cause of donation and transplantation. Um, subsequently, um, attending a few of our events, um, being committed to donor families and to just letting them know how much we appreciate the gift that's been given on behalf of their loved ones. Um, in December of last year, um, Commissioner and Mrs. Ings attended our annual donor quilt dedication ceremony where they were able to share their family's testimony, um, not only about his mother-in-law, but also his brother-in-law who had been a kidney transplant recipient. So we know very well that it's through the connection of donor families, transplant recipients, and through the sharing of stories, that's what motivates people to make the decision to designate themselves as a donor by signing up on Florida's donor registry. And without the generosity of donor families, without the gift of donation, absolutely nothing that we do would be possible. We would not be able to provide the gift of sight to people um, without that happening. And we also are fully aware without the, with that without the commitment of community leaders such as Commissioner Ings, um, that sometimes those stories will not be shared and um, lost opportunities are there for people to make the decision to designate themselves as donors. Um, I just wanted to mention, I'd be remiss if I did not, he's absolutely right that um, 48,000 people every year are um, the beneficiaries of the gift of sight through cornea donation and transplantation. It is actually the oldest type of tissue uh, transplant possible, actually the oldest type of organ or tissue transplant possible. Um, it was first performed in 1905 and the um, success rate of a cornea transplant is actually 95%. So the vast majority of individuals who receive the gift of sight have successful transplants and don't have the need for a second transplant. Um, we are so grateful to you, Commissioner Ings, for being such a champion of our cause and, and to help influence the lives of families in this community. And we are so honored to present to you with this year's uh, Community Champion for Sight Award in appreciation for your outstanding support and commitment to the gift of donation. So thank you so very much. All right.
Okay, I don't think we had any presentations at the last meeting, so we made up for <laughs> today. Um, I'm going to move quickly into the mayor's update. So last week we celebrated the 11th anniversary of the city's office, Hispanic Office for Local Assistance, otherwise known as OLA, which provides valuable information and referral services to residents and newcomers to Central Florida and they connect them with more than 140 government and community organizations finding jobs, housing, health care services, educational opportunities. And since opening in 2004, the OLA office has served more than 150,000 citizens through in-person visits, calls, and emails. Orlando is a diverse multicultural community and our office welcomes newcomers and I don't know of another city in Florida that has an office like the OLA office. So we're always looking for new partnerships and I want to recognize Commissioner Ortiz for his leadership in these efforts and helping us connect our newly um, new residents to the city of Orlando. Thank you, Thank Commissioner you, Ortiz. Thank you. As you know, we are working very hard and I think that we could claim the status of being the most sustainable city in the Southeast United States. Um, and with that effort, working hand in hand, it is appropriate to, uh, during the entire month of April, which is known as Earth Month, and particularly April 22nd as Earth Day, the city is hosting multiple events to invite our community to join us in our effort to go green. They are posted on cityoforlando.net for a full listing. Also, the 26th annual Spring Fiesta in the Park will take place on April 11th and 12th in Lake Eola in downtown. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. We have over 200 artists and crafts booths, the kids' play area, live entertainment, and unlike the Winter Park Art Festival, dogs are welcome to the <laughs> Spring Fiesta. I say that just because not this year, but last year I went and took Sammy, and they turned me away. And actually, they didn't quite have me escorted out, but it was <laughs> wow. pretty close. So we have pet-friendly vendors, and we have uh, activities at the 98.9 WMMO Pet Fiesta area. Again, you can go to cityoforlando.net for more information on that. So a few items of note, um, although it's a non-controversial agenda, we have a lot of really good things on the agenda. Um, one is the second phase of our Orlando Walk Sidewalk project, mm -hmm. the first phase, and both of these have been funded through federal funding, was approximately 17 miles of new sidewalks, and our second phase will add 22 miles of new sidewalks. Construction will start uh, very quickly this spring and should be finished by late spring 2016, so over the course of those two projects, 40 miles of new sidewalks. We'll also approve an agreement with links to add new fare free limo service to our North Quarter in downtown. The new North Quarter Loop will add five additional limo stations and to the current limo orange line and it will start service on April the 19th, so right around the corner. And then following that, we will break ground on the new Lime Line, which will provide Transportation options along Huey, Creative Village, Link Central Station, Sunrail, and Florida A&M Law School. Okay, here's a pretty cool one. This, since it's Earth Month, the National Recreation and Park Association, Disney, ABC, and ESPN are collaborating to help revitalize parks around the U.S., and including a park right here in Orlando through something called Parks Build Community. So we are going to be receiving a $20,000 grant and Orlando residents get to choose which park it will be utilized in. So either for trail improvements in Bill Frederick Park, equipment at the Paramore Kids Zone foot, or equipment for the Paramore Kids Zone football team or a shade structure for the Orlando Skate Park. So Let's see, I think that pits districts four, five, <laughs> yeah. and six there against each other. So mm -hmm. we'll see <laughs> who gets to celebrate right. in about another month. And then another big happening. We've had so many extraordinary things happen in the last year and a half. But this Wednesday, uh, we'll be joining Orange County Mayor Teresa Jacobs and executives from Tavistock to break ground on the United States Tennis Association's new home of American tennis 
in Lake Nona. In addition to breaking ground, USTA will unveil the site's official name, new renderings of the campus, which will be 63 acres with uh, more than 105 tennis courts. It is by double the largest facility of its type in America. Um, it will also serve as the UC as UCF's varsity tennis program home. On the agenda is a grant from to the city from the FDOT on behalf of USTA to construct the entry road that is needed to access the new facility. We anticipate that this project will bring 150 new to Florida jobs with an average salary exceeding $85,000. So it's certainly going to enhance our reputation as one of the sporting capitals of the United States. With that, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. And the consent agenda is um, a number of items that are acted upon through a single vote of council. We give each of our council members an opportunity to comment on items on the consent agenda or update you on items of significance from their district. Hopefully they won't be as lengthy as I was. Uh, and to set the tone, we're going to begin today with Commissioner Jim Gray. Right. I'll set the bar for you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Two items. First, would like to uh, thank all the volunteers and the, uh, uh, the citizen committees. We couldn't run the city without your volunteerism. So congratulations and thank you for that. And also would like to echo the Mayor's comments on items C7 and 8. Um, and thank the staff for working with the state on the agreement so that we can get that infrastructure in to facilitate and accommodate the USTA. It's exciting times out there and that, that's going to be, a, 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 as they say, a game changer. But thanks to the staff for that. And Mayor, that's all I've got. Thank you, Commissioner. Co District 2, Commissioner Ortiz. That was quick. Oh, hold on a second. That was quick, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> uh, real quick, items of the district on March 27, I want to congratulate the Summer Business Partnership. They had their first uh, golf tournament and raising fund for a non-for-profit organization. Uh, it was very successful and it was really well put together. Also want to uh, congratulate Dr. Jeff Galtz from Valencia Community College on the unveiling of the Valencia New School of Public Safety. Uh, on items of the district, I want to, I'm looking forward to this annexation um, uh, to the city of 6933 Creek Fort Road. Uh, the plans that have been pre pre <laughs> presented to us are very promising. I think it's, it's, it's a good project, and I think the community will uh, welcome that with open arms. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move to District 3. Commissioner Stewart. I appreciate them uh, giving me their time, and so for the next few minutes, I'll talk. <laughs> right no, ahead. Jim, I wouldn't do that Go to right you. Ahead. Just a couple of quick things. Um, I, I want to echo uh, Commissioner Grace's uh, comments about the volunteers. I've said it often. Uh, we simply cannot accomplish our task uh, without the core of volunteers that we have from our boards to the people who serve in our community. Uh, it simply is a vital part of our community, and I love them being involved. Uh, this past Saturday, I had a chance to be over at the uh, Wounded Warrior Lone Sailor Project over in Baldwin Park. They had their uh, uh, annual run, had 1,100 people now. Uh, and they raised roughly about uh, $70,000 going towards the Lone Sailor um, monument that they hope to have completed by the end of this year. So we're excited about uh, our participation in that and our commitment. And Mayor, thank you for your leadership and the staff's leadership uh, for that. A couple of quick uh, announcements in the neighborhood. The College Park Neighborhood Association is having a uh, meeting uh, tonight to go over the, some of the I-4 plans uh, and then its impact in the College Park community. Please plan on attending. Um, the Orlando Science Center is having their Inspire Science Breakfast this week. I'll have the opportunity to be there um, and just to, uh, to support them. That's over at Lock Haven Park, and we have to remember that this starts over there. Orlando Science Center starts in Lock, Lock, Lock Haven Park uh, almost 50 years ago. So uh, this is a wonderful part of our community, and I get a chance to, to be part of that and represent the city for that. Uh, the Lou Gardens Jazz and Blues Stroll is coming up on uh, Saturday the 11th, uh, so at 7 o'clock. Go to our lougardens.org for more information. And then, of course, um, there have been a lot of talk about some of the rezoning around R2 and uh, uh, throughout the city. Uh, there will be a public, another public meeting, a workshop done for the, um, uh, the Missile Planning Board on April 21st. We'd love to get the community's input on that, uh, so please get a chance to come there before it comes here to City Council. 
Um, and I want to mention those two things uh, that you also mentioned, Mayor. Uh, C2, our, our, uh, the, the northern expansion of the limbo system is important. Um, I'm thrilled about seeing that. And, of course, uh, as funding gets available, we'll continue to kind of go to uh, Florida Hospital and to Orlando Health. So they're going to be important links to this downtown um, uh, corridor, and I appreciate your work and effort in that. And, of course, Orlando Walks, too. I, we are, uh, on this council, I can tell you that we are... Uh, committed to uh, sa public safety and uh, enhancement of our neighborhoods with sidewalks. Appreciate your initiative in doing that and appreciate the funding coming through to accomplish that task and look forward to working with our staff to make sure that our communities are properly notified and, and, uh, and given plenty of warning as this moves forward. So, And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll move on to District 4. Commissioner Sheehan. Well, thank you, Mayor. And uh, we got to spend a lot of time with the Easter Bunny this weekend with four different events. But I have to tell you, you know, a lot of people were posting on Facebook about their family events. And, of course, Commissioner Hale's grandson, Poppy, was the cutest Easter outfit <laughs> ever. That child is just darling. So Poppy won the best Easter outfit. Commissioner Hale, you'll have to tell him that. Um, on item B6 on city sidewalks, I'm delighted to see this, um, you know, $3.1 million, 22 miles. I mean, uh, I've been here 16 years, and when I first got here, we were doing sidewalks in Audubon Park, and I actually got death threats. We went to court, and I'm delighted to see 16 years later that it's no longer that we have to fight to get sidewalks put in, and I'm delighted, too, to see that my district is benefiting from that because, again, you can't have, um, you know, sun rail and transportation and bus rapid transit without having a way for people to get there safely, and uh, you just can't have people walking in the streets. So I'm delighted to see this, making our neighborhood safer, and you know, hopefully someday we'll get off that list of you know, the top, you know, municipalities with fatalities of people walking. I, I think that should be our aspiration, and I'm delighted to see the funding put in place to do that. Um, on item C6, I think this is just a great item, relocating the date palms from I-4 construction to use them on Orange Avenue and downtown south. I think that's just brilliant, and anywhere else that we can reuse some of that landscaping from I-4 as they're doing their construction to beautify areas, I think that's an excellent idea. And you know, I know that there's some other opportunities to expand that along Orange, and if we can do that, work with the, uh, the counties concerned about some maintenance issues, but this is so very, very important to do because, again, beautiful, mature landscaping that we can put in just as long as we water it. It's a fabulous idea, and on item D1, I love the shade structure for the skate park. I know we gotta fight for it, so uh, <laughs> it's on, four, five, and six. Let's make something great happen for our city, that $20,000 grant. Thank you, Lisa and FPR, for for that opportunity to make um, to beautify and, and add to the amenities in our districts. Thank you, Mayor. We'll move on to District 5, Commissioner Hill. Yes, I'd like to uh, echo uh, the other commissioner's sentiment about the uh, walkability, especially there in the Paramore, which is big uh, on our Paramore uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, more people, less cars. Um, like to thank uh, Chief Williams uh, of the Orlando Fire Department and his staff, also Lisa Early and Park and Rex. Uh, as for Saturday, we had uh, Community Day in Tinkerfield uh, where uh, many people came out. We had barbecue, uh, music. I'd uh, like to thank the Communications Department um, for being there to uh, uh, take pictures of the uh, uh, folk and their children and families throwing uh, baseballs from the mound, sitting in the stands, which uh, uh, it was a bit, bittersweet day, I must admit, for some. But I, I was hoping, and it, it did, it start bridging some of the healing. And that was uh, one of the major purpose for it, and also for people to come and talk about their memories there. Uh, I truly know baseball isn't dead, Tinkerfield isn't dead. Um, so that was the beginning of a restoration, I would hope. Um, we, you can also find, uh, I know a lot of folk was asking about uh, 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 updates on Tinkerfield and could they make suggestions and get information regarding some of the seats. And the city has created a website and a link uh, where uh, updates will be uh, uh, posted and also where uh, uh, seat sales for some of the seats there that will be salvageable uh, uh, there at Tinkerfield. And the funding will not, uh, uh, the monies raised will not go to the city. It will go back into the budget of uh, commemorating uh, 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 Tinkerfield. So I just want to make that known. Uh, I was 
we also, uh, Commissioner Ings was able to have a, a Easter egg hunt over at Poppy, pa uh, Poppy Park there in District 6, where many of the residents, about 600 uh, uh, families and their children came out from District 5 and District 6 because uh, on the right side of the Carver Shores Corridor mm -hmm. is District 5, mm -hmm. and on the left side is District 6. So all the families came together. It was about 3,000 eggs that the kids uh, 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 picked up, and it was just a beautiful time with uh, both districts coming together in love. Um, I'd like to uh, congratulate Commissioner uh, Stewart. Uh, on March 24th, we were able, with uh, Commissioner Ortiz and, and Mayor Dyer, uh, to go out and, and have the 15th Annual Street Celebration there. Uh, it was, uh, I think it had to be over uh, five or 600 folk and children, smiling faces. It was clown music. I didn't know the mayor knew how to electric slide, at least try. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was great, so thank you for your service there in the Paramore area for all the years, uh, uh, Commissioner Stewart. We look for many more. I like to inform uh, the community that uh, the Orlando Tech community that has been centrally located there in the downtown corner of the um, Old Church Street Station has now crossed over into the Paramore area, deep in the center of it, uh, on the west side of I-4. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dan McGow, young 30-something-year-old CEO of, uh, I think it's pretty, those tech folk are pretty creative. The name of the company is Effing Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, but what they're doing is uh, uh, partnering with uh, my office on helping uh, 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 bridge that digital divide with teaching the kids computer science education and coding, they have already connected with the after school all stars and uh, they want to do a start their own corp all stars there in the Paramore area. So I really appreciate them for uh, helping uh, 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 make folk know that there's some good things going on in Paramore, also on the west side. Um, Another, another great organization is uh, the Downtown Credo Group um, that I, I did fail to mention, or did I? I'd like to thank Lisa Early and the Parks and Rec, did I mention that? For providing those balls and gloves for us there on Saturday. Uh, I don't think that event would have gone the way it did uh, if we didn't have uh, 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 those uh, items there. Even uh, the chief threw, uh, a ball across the uh, mound. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you, Credo. I'm going to be quick. Thank you, Credo, for uh, 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 in their part of that College Park group. Thank you, Commissioner Stewart, for coming out to support that and being one of the judges. Um, where we had our first annual Paramore uh, parade along with the fourth annual bike rally, and I was the uh, Grand Marshal of that parade and I was on a swing girls 10 speed. I was not in a vintage uh, drop top. <laughs> so that was cool and, and um, the kids truly enjoyed it and we ended it there in the uh, ZR Raleigh Park with a fun day. And uh, what we wanted to show Credo and, and the office is uh, we were celebrating diversity. Uh, so it was where people of all ethnicities, genders, uh, and sexualities could come together into a, a community where most people might not look like them and, and show love and support and I think it was a, a great thing and I, I continue to uh, thank Credo for all their efforts. For They don't just do it once a year but weekly uh, a group of special people in College Park are coming to teach our kids sewing and tutoring and mentoring them. And it does take a, a special community. And last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, Reggie McGill, Walter Hawkins, and Marcia Goodwin Hope. Um, we were able to wrap up, not wrap up, but complete our Urban Task Force uh, action plan. And uh, for months we've been working on those initiatives. We were finally able to put it in a packet 
uh, and we will be posting it online there on the District 5 website. And we have now will start to implement uh, the action plan. As a matter of fact, we started this week when we have two families that uh, we now have uh, taken, and it's similar to what they're doing over at the uh, Men's Coalition. It's a supportive uh, wraparound uh, 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 initiative where we're not just addressing uh, the youth, but we're addressing their parents with parenting skills, their families, our guardians, with jobs, delinquent activities, uh, apprenticeship programs, mentoring, and poverty. So i just like to thank those 50 folk. We still got about 50 or 60 people on board. Start out with a few, uh, at least 100. But I still say that's great for after four months that we have great community leaders that are truly, truly dedicated to seeing a district in our inner city. And I thank each and every one of you for uh, taking on that burden. And thank you, Chief Mina, for still sending your, uh, Eric, your, your deputy chief. He's been instrumental in that. And I know uh, that we have your support. And I know we're going to be able to curb this violence and, and build uh, uh, families in the midst of it in our community. So I thank you. And that's all I have, Mayor. OK, is there a motion on the consent agenda? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So moved. Uh, Second. You, you <laughs> Fast. Wait. All right. I thought you told me you didn't have anything today, uh, Commissioner Riggs. That wasn't me. That was great. <laughs> okay. We'll move on to District 6, Commissioner Riggs. Thank you, Mayor. You know, um, as I continue to celebrate black history uh, each month, I just want to recognize that I attended the Onyx Speaks at the Orlando Museum of Art on March the 26th. And it was to see and hear uh, Amelia Boynton Robinson. And she is 103 years old. She's the mother of the Voting Rights Act. As a matter of fact, she participated in Bl uh, Bloody Sunday on March the 7th, 1965. Uh, and that was the march from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama, as they were uh, attempting or crossing the Edmund uh, Pettus Bridge. Um, she also helped Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. plan this march and uh, was so very significant and instrumental in that. And she was knocked down and left for dead. Uh, a 17 year old high school student shielded and protected her. His name is Joe Jones, and Joe Jones is now living in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, what was interesting about this event, too, at Onyx Speaks was that Joe was on stage with her and uh, had an opportunity to see her again. Uh, also in attendance was Commissioner uh, Hill and uh, Byron Brooks, our CAO. I uh, want to thank Rich Black for all that he's done with Onyx Magazine. Uh, Rich is the owner. And of course, you know, they had the Onyx Awards on that uh, Saturday night at the uh, Performing Arts Center, Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center. And on Friday, March 27th, uh, Orlando Monarchs baseball kicked off their reception at the City Hall Rotunda, Ricky Weeks. And also that night, uh, the Orlando Magic played the Pistons and I had the sweep. So I had another opportunity for some black history moment. Uh, Martin Luther King III, and his wife were in the suite with us, along with Congresswoman Corrine Brown. So that was a very uh, influential night uh, there. I just went there. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Saturday, uh, lots of things going on. Uh, so with uh, Commissioner Gray looking at me down there, I won't talk too much about those. <laughs> but I will say this. the. Uh, Magic Black Tie and Tennis Gala was a very successful event. And Mayor Dyer, of course, you were there. And Alex Martins, the president of Magic, uh, did an outstanding job with this particular program. Uh, huge corporate sponsors, Levy Restaurant and Lee Wesley and Associates. Uh, Lee Wesley and Associates being Arthur Lee and his company. And the food was just fantastic, so it was really great. And also that same night was the 11th annual Onyx Awards. And Reginald McGill was on hand there to present and uh, call out the elected officials 
I thank you for your service continually, uh, Reggie. And then also, Mayor, real quickly, uh, I had a celebration of success, Central Florida Reception Center graduation program, and that was Thursday, April the 2nd, and I was the guest speaker uh, at the Central Florida Reception Center. Uh, and this involved um, seven inmates that uh, received their GEDs. Uh, Miss Leticia Silva, who used to work for the city of Orlando, is now a teacher there at the facility, uh, invited me to come out to attend this event. Uh, I, was, I also had the opportunity to meet the warden, Michael Morgan, uh, so this was a great event, and he wants to do more uh, to bring the community closer to the reception center, and so I'm going to work with him as much as I can to kind of make something like that happen. And it's really great because there's so much talent behind those bars, and we really have to do something to help these guys when they're coming out of prison to be able to get jobs and really to fit back into uh, society. And then this past Saturday, uh, April 4th, the Minority Veterans Town Hall Meeting and Veterans Information Seminar uh, was held at the Smith Center, uh, sponsored by myself and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, the Raffman Club, and the Raffman being retired, Air Force, Marine, Army, and Navy, uh, along with Mr. Uh, Arthur Jarvis, the president, uh, this was a very successful event. Uh, representing the Minority Veterans Program coordinator was uh, Edwin Johnson, and they had so much information and opportunities for veterans, and they really went through that, and we're gonna do more to assist with those particular efforts because many of the veterans needed to really be there to uh, receive some of these uh, benefits. And just as a note, Mayor, um, the Veterans Administration is looking to build a new burial site, a new uh, veterans burial cemetery here in the Central Florida area. And it's uh, going to be in Brevard County, and so that's going to be uh, great uh, for us in the Orlando and Central Florida area. And so, Mayor, with that, I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ring, second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Let's, uh, without objection, recess the city council meeting and convene the CRA meeting. First item of business is accepting CRA advisory board meeting minutes from February 25th, 2015. Is there a motion by Commissioner second. Sheehan, second by Commissioner Stewart. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number two is approving the CRA meeting minutes from March 9th. Move. Motion by Commissioner Stewart. Second. Second by Commissioner Sheehan. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Number three is the second amended and restated operations agreement with Limo, which I guess we have already passed on the consent agenda, but this is the CRA portion of that. Correct. You want to enlighten us any more than that, <laughs> Thomas? Uh, certainly, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor. Thank you, and good afternoon, Commissioners and those attending there. So item three, as the Mayor said, is approving and amended and restated operations agreement for Limo. We all know, of course, that since 1997, um, CRA, the city, and, and Lynx have partnered on a downtown circulator, um, which we call Limo. Uh, in 97, there was one line, which became the orange line, 2.64 miles, basically from City Hall up to the Central Plex. Um, that agreement has been amended uh, a couple of times, most recently in March on March 31st of last year when we added and it provided for both the, uh, the new ex expansions, those being the grapefruit as well as the lime line. And so today, pursuant to uh, a limo north and south expansion alternative analysis report, the original limo line, the orange line, is now to uh, uh, incorporate an, an expansion up into the north quarter district. <coughs> um, uh, via a 1.64 mile loop up into that district which features three new stops and two new stations uh, and at, at an annual operating cost of just under $10,000. Uh, the CRA advisory board has recommended approval and staff is requ requesting your approval today. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ring, second by Commissioner Sheehan. Discussion? 
Yeah. Yeah. None. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. aye. That was moved by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Shea. Okay. I'll restate that. Commissioner Hill's voice was sounding a little <laughs> deep today. <laughs> Actually, I don't hear as well out of my left ear as I do my right ear. How about that? All right. That motion, uh, Madam Clerk, was by Commissioner Hill rather than Commissioner Ames. Got it. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And item number four, Thomas. Thank you, Mayor. Item number four is authorizing CRA staff to provide notices of proposed amendments to the CRA Community Redevelopment Area Plan as required by state statute. Um, as you know, the Mayor Dyer has directed and the CRA aid has provided funding for a planning and visioning initiative known as Project DTO Advancing Downtown Orlando. Uh, that is ongoing and moving towards a conclusion um, in anticipation of that and the three deliverables that come out of that, those being a division plan, uh, a marketing strategy, and a comprehensive rewrite of the Community Redevelopment Agency Area Redevelopment Area Plan. Um, this action uh, is to authorize CRA staff to provide notices of the proposed amendments to the CRA Community Redevelopment Area Plan as required again by uh, Section 163.346 of Florida statute uh, to the taxing authorities um, in the area. Staff request your approval at this time. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Hill. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. <coughs> Any further business to come before the CRA, Thomas? There's none, Mayor. Thank you. Then we'll adjourn the CRA without objection and we will convene the neighbor. Hood Improvement District Board of Directors meeting. Only business of uh, the NID is to accept meeting minutes and approving actions of the Downtown South Neighborhood Improvement District Advisory Council for March 11, 2015. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Second. Sheehan. Second by Commissioner Hill. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 That time the other way around? That time it was, man. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Sheehan made the motion. Commissioner Ings had the second. Madam Clerk. Uh, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Without objection, we will adjourn the, the Neighborhood Improvement District meeting. We will reconvene the City Council meeting. That brings us to hearings ordinances on second reading number one, Madam Clerk. This is Ordinance 2015-12, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to security fences, amending Section 58.930, Orlando City Code, to define security fences, to prohibit security fences in certain locations, to provide special regulations for electrified fences, and to provide other regulations for security fences, providing for severability, codification, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Move to adopt. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ng, second by Commissioner Ortiz, and I believe that we incorporated several suggestions yes. that council made uh, during the first reading into the ordinance clarifying some if i remember right some barbed wire whether barbed wire could be used and specifically where uh, electric fencing could be used okay discussion uh is there anyone from the public like to testify on this matter discussion among commissioners hearing none all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed motion carries Number two, Madam Clerk. This is Ordinance 2015-11, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, relating to the Land Development Code, amending Part 3B, Chapter 65, relating to subdivisions to allow lot splits for lots of greater than five acres in area under certain circumstances. Amending Section 62.200 to amend the definition of lot split, providing clarifying grammatical and technical amendments, providing for severability, codification, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Move to adopt. Motion by Commissioner Ings, second by Commissioner Stewart. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Number three, Madam Clerk. This is Ordinance 2015-5, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the city's adopt growth management plan to change the future land use map designation for a portion of approximately 4.8 acres of land generally located north of West Gore Street east of Lucerne Terrace, south of Ernestine Street and west of Cool Avenue, from office medium intensity to mixed use corridor high intensity, providing for amendment of the city's official future land use maps, providing for severability, correction scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Moved it down. Second. Motion by Commissioner Hill. <laughs> Second by Commissioner Sheehan. 
Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Uh, discussion among commissioners here, none. All in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? So the motion carries. All right, ordinances first read, Madam Clerk, number one. This is ordinance 2015-14, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the Orlando Health Plan Development Zoning Ordinance to add approximately 0.53 acres of land to the Plan Development Zoning District, such land being generally located north of West Underwood Street, east of South Loop Cern Terrace, south of Columbia Street, and west of South Cool Avenue, providing a conforming legal description, PD planning area map, and PD land use plan, providing for severability, correction of Scrivener's errors, and an effective date. So Second. Motion by Commissioner Sheehan, second by Commissioner Ings, although I think both of you said it at the same time that time. Okay. <laughs> Anyone from the public that would like to testify? Discussion among commissioners here, none on favor the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 As opposed, motion carries. Number two, Madam Clerk. Ordinance 2015-8, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Orlando, Florida, amending the land development regulations for the Nona Park Plan Development District located generally at the southwest corner of the intersection of Narcusi Road and Dowden Road and comprised of 26.1 acres of land, more or less, providing an amended development plan for certain lots of the planned development district, providing amended special land development regulations and permitted uses in the planned development district, providing for severability, correction, scrivener's errors, and an effective date. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Gray, second by Commissioner Ortiz. Is there anyone from the public that would like to testify on this matter? Discussion among commissioners hearing none all in favor of the motion indicate so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. That concludes the official business of the Orlando City Council for today's meeting. Okay, so I've got one general parents request card, Kelly Cohen. Did you want to speak, Kelly? Okay. <laughs> then we don't. Okay. Well, we did that already. So we stand adjourned. <laughs>